there's four centres were set up following the government's um, agri-tech strategy back in the sort of 2013. Um, and we actually started and commenced from 2016. So there's four centres. Um, and um, going from the top, top left, there's CHAP, Crop Health and Protection. Then going across Agri-Epi um, is about engineering and precision farming. And then down the bottom right there, Agrimetrics, looking at big data, and then ourselves, CL. Um, so we have a, a different uh, focus, but we're all unique collaboration trying to link government, academia and industry. And we work together under this sort of family of agri-tech centres and that, that's our logo. Um, where do we fit within um, sort of government ways of working? Well, we um, work with Innovate UK, part of UKRI, um, that, that uh, reports into Bayes. So Innovate UK is the government's innovation arm. Um, and so we have a close relationship there and we're set up um, through um, through working with Innovate. And what we try and do as a group of centres is um, work with lots of government departments. So um, food often falls between stools. So we look to try and get this virtual agri-tech group within government. So clearly we work with UKRI and Bayes, but also clearly DEFRA in terms of policy and DIT for International Relations, the Foreign, Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office um, and nutrition where we can. So we try and get the right people together to, to really highlight the importance of issues relating to food. Um, and in trying to bring all parties together, um, we also try and map the landscape for other parties. So as well as academia um, and industry and government, um, we'll make sure we speak to um, trade associations and the farming unions and the levy boards, just to try and make sure that we're coordinating things because this is a very complex um, landscape in terms of food. So what we're looking to do um, is improve the efficiency, the resilience and the profit within our sector. And we can do that by building um, collaborations and signposting where the best expertise might be if you're looking at future research and innovation. So um, in that mapping, we also find that we come across other centres and there you'll see on the um, on the image that I've got um, the NVIC logo, because uh, when I started three years ago, I was conscious that we mustn't be duplicating and we should be complementing each other. So um, Mark and I have a regular catch up just to look at where there's work that overlaps and clearly when it comes to biofilms and food, there's a common area um, there. So it's important that, that, that we're working to complement each other. Um, so I think that's just an overview of all the centres. Um, you, you may work with individuals, but if you're not sure which centre to work with, go through the Agritech Centre's um, website, the website address at the bottom, or come to any one of us. And if it's not us, if we're not the right people, we'll signpost you to the other person. So a bit more just about CL. So um, as the name suggests, we, we're focused on, on livestock um, and that is the, the whole of the livestock food chain. So uh, all the main species um, from pre-farm gates, so suppliers into farms through to finished food product. Um, we um, see ourselves as a world-class and world-leading alliance of, of research facilities bringing new technologies and processes to food production. Um, very much the front door, we offer a front door to innovation. I would like to provide leadership and create these valuable collaborations between different parties. So as the sort of infographic shows, we've got 12 academic partners um, and we've mapped how many um, um, colleagues they have within each who are focused on animal science. We think we've got about 800 researchers. We work with a group of industry members and across government departments. Um, so we've got um, access, we like to facilitate access to these um, facilities that we've invested in. So, so what do we actually do? Well, um, in the first place, when we were set up, we tried to improve the research infrastructure. So we did that by working with colleagues in um, industry and academia to say, what do we need? What, what don't we have um, to be world-class? Um, what would industry like to be working with? So we specified a load of new um, investment um, facilities. Um, and then we looked at building collaborations and where we are now, we're looking to use those collaborations and those investments to really um, inspire and encourage um, innovation in our sector. And then lastly, we like to last, we, like, we see ourselves as having a role to act as um, ambassadors for livestock. Sometimes um, livestock food production systems get a, a, a tough ride and we like to provide the science and evidence to some of those challenges. Our role isn't lobbying, it's not defending, but actually let's provide the science and if Tom's got a question, um, let's try and find the answer to that based on, on evidence rather than rhetoric. Um, an example of, of that will be recently, um, we published a report on carbon net zero, which is putting together all the known science in that sector to be able to, for government or, or any party in the chain to use that as a starting point. And we got 12, 12 um, 14 different universities to endorse it. Um, and it was written by a group 
a collaboration across different institutions. So that's just an example. And the areas where we work, the areas of focus, um, you'll see the list there. So gene technologies, nutrition, um, health and welfare, et cetera. Um, and then further down, obviously food production, food safety and quality. Um, and the different group, um, you know, it, it covers all key areas. And what we're always looking at is what's next and what's um, what's on the horizon. Where should we be looking at future focus? And it's really interesting that Colin was just talking about um, um, microbiome because we've got a workshop looking at what what do we want to know? What do we think we'll need in the future? So we've got a workshop about that next week. So that's absolutely fascinating. Um, so I've talked about the different part, the, different, the things we do. So that's a snapshot. I'll just show you some of our, our, our partners. Um, so we are a membership organisation. Um, as the slide shows, we've got a range of members um, covering all sorts of different sectors and sizes of businesses. So I'm um, just going across, obviously, retailers and suppliers. Um, animal feed businesses are key in terms of precision nutrition and new, new products for feed and new properties. Um, livestock health and welfare we've got the big health companies there and some smaller some smaller businesses looking at health and welfare issues um, processors um, the sort of meat egg and dairy processors and then a whole group of societies and trade associations that we want to make sure uh, we're not duplicating and we're really learning from them they know who they represent and what the key challenges are so we work with them and then providers of on-farm solutions and i'm just looking at one of the members that would be very relevant for this audience there's just one in that sort of top right bubble um, is chemitech and they produce a product to remove biofilms in, in sort of farm um, pipe work. So what we do um, is work with the business to try and identify and develop um, the livestock research needs that these businesses have and then build the relevant, relevant collaborations um, to try and solve them or connect them with the right group of academics or sometimes there might be funding calls we can help translate that. Um, the other important thing is for when the research has been done is to try and help access that research. There is some fantastic work being done and sometimes it's not accessible to the audience. It's very, very complicated um, and specialist. So sometimes we need to help um, translate the, the output of that um, to make it more relevant and usable. Um, if you're interested in membership, um, get in touch with us. Um, our contact details are at the end. Um, so talked about government, talked about industry, importantly is our, our network of research partners and these are the 12 universities and institutes who we worked with initially, um, but that doesn't mean we can't work with anyone else, you know, we're open to work with any parties um, in the UK and, and elsewhere, um, but this is the group that we've made joint investments with, so everything we've invested, the university partners have invested with us, so it's a real collaboration. Um, Everything where we've done invest, where we've made investments is open access for people to use. It's not just for that institution. And again, as I said, we do um, welcome new research partnerships. Um, so just to give you a sort of flavour of, of, of how we work uh, and what, what we've um, invested in, um, people will probably think about the things at farm level we've invested in. So if I looked at Leeds University and we've invested in a fantastic new national pig centre, so that will be looking at all aspects of production for both indoor um, pigs and outdoor. And we can do comparative research in the same place for that. And we've got an amazing group of people and all the sort of real time monitoring of every aspect of production there at Leeds. But we also have facilities at other parts of the country that can complement that. So in AFB in Northern Ireland, we've got facilities on precision nutrition. And at SRUC in Scotland, we've got um, a unit that's on free farrowing to look at the impact there in terms of productivity, but health and welfare. Um, and then we do genetics and advanced imaging at the Roslyn Institute in Scotland. So um, what we can offer to industry looking at any aspect would be the best facilities, but a whole load of people and you don't, they don't necessarily need to be in the same place and we can link people together so that we can really push the innovation forward in terms of using that expertise that's available. Um, if we looked at dairy in Nottingham, we've got um, an indoor um, housed unit um, but that's complemented again in Northern Ireland at Afby by an outside unit and in Cornwall by some uh, a new unit looking at sort of um, um, technologies for measuring and improving the slurry management. So again, we're trying to make sure that we're connecting researchers and providing the very best opportunity for um, industry to use. Um, and then of course, those are farm level, um, where we look at um, food products and, and food authenticity or food quality or new properties, um, our main partner would be at Queen's, Queen's University in Belfast, 
along with SIUC uh, and Roslyn would be the main partners on, on food technologies and food processing. Um, and that would include um, um, lab equipment, but also sort of carcass evaluation and measurement technologies. And um, we've got a mobile sensory lab to, to get um, consumer information back quickly without having to have trained panels. Um, and we can use that fast information for looking at breeding decisions. Um, I think it's important, um, again, from what Colin said, it was, it was completely fascinating, what we can learn from the work we do at factory level as well to farm and how we can use techniques and technologies and information to, to inform best practices at different parts of the supply chain. So um, onto my next slide, it's just what we try and, and do working with all our um, members, but particularly the industry members, is say, what are the key challenges you have? Where should we be focusing our efforts? Where should we be trying to influence government in terms of either policy or importantly funding streams for new research? And this is the list um, that we've categorized following from um, feedback we've had. And number one on that list, as uh, many of you will be experiencing, is climate for smart food systems. And that encompasses all the different areas of delivering net zero carbon to uh, metrics on sustainability. Um, however, if you look at them, they're actually all interrelated. You know, we, we know that um, health and welfare of animals also affects your climate. Um, and and so, so you can interchange those. Um, so that list would be on many of your businesses or your research institutions list too. But the one at the bottom um, is about food safety, quality and integrity. And I think that's just one I wanted to talk on a little bit more um, um, next. So my example um, of one of our um, investments is with um, Queen's University. Um, and there's a picture there at the top there of Brendan, who's um, obviously chairing this um, conference. And we work with the Institute of Global Food Security. So as well as um, um, a wider group of assets, we've um, working there with their Asset Lab, um, which stands for um, Assured, Safe and Traceable, which has really high spec lab equipment. But more recently, we've launched um, our Centre for Plasma and Agri-Food, which is Agroplast. Um, now, that's a joint investment, um, and um, I, I won't say too much about it because I also noticed on the agenda after I, I produced this that we've got another Brandon um, from USDA and um, talking this afternoon who's probably much more knowledgeable in cold plasmas in terms of technical details. But here's just a, a sort of headline list of, of areas that we want to explore. So um, new cutting edge research and uh, an opportunity for industry evaluation of how cold plasmas can be used. And we are really wanting to explore the use in on farm for livestock health care and biosecurity purposes, but also in processing for sort of food hygiene, hygiene and, and shelf life extension. So um, we think it could do um, uh, treatments for, for infections and wounds, um, really reducing the use for antibiotic use um, and for disinfectant properties in livestock sheds. So we think there's lots of opportunities and um, we, we're looking to work with industry partners and through the Agriplast facilities. I think really importantly in terms of the food production is that it leaves no residues. So again, we'll talk about it a little bit more, but a um, slightly different facility that we've got there, um, but we do encourage industry to get in touch with the team at Agroplast. So um, that was a whistle stop tour. I'd love to talk a lot more about other species um, and ways of working, but um, I think it's really important for the success of all our sectors that we work together. We've got great facilities, great expertise, and we make it really accessible. Um, from the um, very detailed presentations from earlier this morning, um, I think it makes an exciting arena for us all to work in. And I think if we could really communicate that to the wider sector, you'd have a lot of people jumping to try and work in, in food because it is an exciting, exciting place to work. Um, so I'm keen to answer any questions, but equally my cont contact details are there. If you've got any questions, um, um, either email them afterwards or through the chat. Thank you. I'll hand back to Mark. Great. Thank, thank you very much, Lindsay, for that overview of CL and the Agritech Centres in general. And I think we'll probably have time for one final question before lunch. Will? Sure. So thank you, Mark and, and Lindsay. Uh, we've got one question come in that asks, um, how does the capital investment model work for new facilities? Um, so the, the model um, originally so it came through the government's Agritech strategy was that they um, allocated um, amounts of money to each of the centres that we then specified what it should be spent on. Um, so within the case of CL, they were joint investments with our university partners. So on the whole, they're 50-50. Um, and then um, what we do um, is we look to exploit them, um, working with industries, just making sure they're used by industry. 
Um, so then it will be either through grant funded projects or commercial work working with the university. And then going forward, we're really keen to know what else um, industry thinks we should be investing in. And then we, we put in, we would put a, an application to try and get funding for that if relevant. 